Good day, everyone. Uh, I've been homeschooling again, so um, my son's doing his first day back at school one day this week. I find this a ridiculous situation. You're going to bring him back, bring him back, stop screwing me around. We were doing a fine job homeschooling. Also sick to death of the school calling up and saying, um, send us back a text with a W, N, W, or S on, uh, you know, to tell us whether he's working at school work or not working school work or he's sick. Now, which idiot parent is going to either put their kid down as S or NW? I mean, you just put the W down, you send it back. Even the greatest dullard parent who's not educating their kid at all couldn't be that stupid, could they? It's not really helping. This is the education department thinking it needs to have its hand on the kids all the time because uh, they're their responsibility. Well, fuck off. At the moment, my child is my responsibility. You've given him back to me because I can keep him safe. Well, I will also keep him educated. And the dumb fucks out there who can't do that for their kids, they've been sending them to school anyway because you'll let them go to school. The kids, the parents don't want to fucking look after. Well, I've been keeping not only up with the homework, the work from school, I've been keeping ahead of it. We've been doing things the school couldn't have dreamed of sending us. So, stop fucking me about. Anyway, uh, let's get past that. He's at school today. Oh, nothing I can do about it. This is the way the education department have decided it's going to happen. And so I actually get time to record. That's either lucky or unlucky, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, well, we're going to look at uh, probably the worst of Australian society today. The absolute fucking rock bottom. Worse than the parents who can't fucking educate them, their kids while they've got them locked in at home. Um, so here it goes. Clementine Ford. <laughs> yeah, look, if you don't know Clementine Ford, she was famous for being one of the great advocates of the hashtag kill all men. She is everything feminism shouldn't be. Everything it shouldn't be. In a, in a few tweets with her online, I commented on something she tweeted on the, the twits. I don't use the twits often, but I was using the twits because I came across something of hers. Um, having found this thing on the twits, I put up a comment, and within about five tweets backwards and forwards, I had her admitting that she didn't like women. So, um, yeah, um, women make choices. They're not the things she'd choose for them to do. So she doesn't like women. Um, essentially where she went with the whole thing. Anyway, this is another one of those idiot tweets from this woman. Uh, it came up in my feed, as did all this other material during the last week. And my guess is she's fighting to remain relevant now that she's uh, becoming an abject nobody. Why she still has followers has got me fucked. Uh, especially blokes. She has blokes who follow her. It's unfucking believable it used to be that there was no wage gap, you bloody idiot. Well, yes, there's no wage gap, you bloody idiot. Then it was women were just choosing low-paid work. Exactly why there is no wage gap, you bloody idiot. Because it's about choices, not about getting paid less. In most nations, that is illegal. It is actually more likely that a woman will be paid more just for being a woman with the same qualifications as a man. The young women are getting paid more in the same jobs coming out of the same schools with the same qualifications than young men are. So, yeah, there, there's no wage gap. It is the choices that women make. On the whole, as, the, as your wage gap theory is about overall incomes of all women, it is about the life choices they make. Uh, now, it's men do all the dangerous jobs. No, it was always that. That's why the men get paid more. Because they choose the jobs that do pay, that allow them to support a family, that allow them to buy a house, to have groceries on the table, 
uh, to have a meal on the table when they get home that hopefully their loving partner has bothered to throw on a plate for them. I wonder where they'll shift the goalpost to next. Well, there hasn't been a shift in the goalpost. All of these things are right. You're just fucking stupid. I can't wait to find out. By the way, the most essential workers are women. Well, let's see, shall we, how essential these women are, shall we? Here we go. Oh, what do you know, the coronavirus. Um, which is where they're getting this idea that women are the essential workers because they're nurses and cleaners in hospitals and shit. Where uh, there's a recorded low number of intakes there's nobody fucking working or getting crook apparently um and so these people have a look at the nhs in the uk the nurses have got the time to dance around doing fucking tiktok videos i had to have a laugh the other day because they were doing the um the the my my no-go zone dance and if you haven't seen my video on the no-go zone dance go for a hunt it's in there somewhere um anyway Women bear biggest job losses from corona virus. Latest ABS data shows. We already sort of knew that. We didn't need the ABS to tell us. But how essential are these women if we can afford to have them unemployed? Not very essential at all, huh? So women are the most essential workers? Or were women just making us coffee? And doing odd jobs around the joint? Yeah? Hmm. March was a particularly hectic month for this idiot woman because supermarket workers found themselves in the mid midst of a of panic buying. How do you think it was for the fucking suppliers, the truck drivers, the managers? Sheesh. However, foot traffic through the stores where she works behind the checkout has since dropped back. Nothing left on the shelves, was there, after all those fucking idiots went and did the rush buying? I, I like the fact that something I learned um, through my poverty uh, in younger years was that I keep a, stacked, a stocked pantry. Not overly stocked. I can get about two weeks stretch out of my pantry before I'm down to the bottom end digging through the scraps. Um, and, and I like it to be that way. So I didn't have to go and rush by anything and I didn't run out of toilet paper until it was starting to come back on the shelf. In fact, I hadn't run out when it was coming back on the shelf. Uh, so we've moved into a... Uh, our, uh, however, foot traffic through a store is right. That means her hours and take-home pay have also been reduced. <laughs> My wife hasn't worked at all. So she's back at work today. It's her third day since the whole coronavirus. What of it? You think you're the only one. So we've moved into a new, tiny little place. But we're lucky we found something, she said. And? Oh, God. And yeah, isolation has had its ups and downs for everybody. I've been at home homeschooling. I haven't been able to make videos for days on end because I can't have any peace in the home. Uh, yeah, isolation has its ups and downs. Miss Watson is a saver. Well, lucky her. She was doing all right, wasn't she? She has built up quite a cash buffer that she wanted her money to go, to go towards her education or a home, not basic living expenses. Most of my money goes to basic living expenses. Good luck to her that she was able to save, huh? Now, I have to admit that I'm in the best financial position I've ever been in my, in my life at the moment. But, hey. <laughs> I don't know. Whinge and moan and cry. It's like everyone, nobody else ever had anything happen to them. Obviously, it's not an ideal situation, she said. No, last year, my mother-in-law died. My son went to the Navy. I paid for all of that. I had some savings. It all went away. It was gone before the coronavirus. It's not an ideal situation. Of course it's not a fucking ideal Nothing. Whenever you get hit by something unexpected, it's not an ideal situation. 
I'm hoping it'll all come to an end as soon and I can go back to normal start with Staunton Arms bullshit. Anyway, yeah. Moan, moan, moan. It never happened to anyone else. More women losing jobs than men. That's because, as we know from Miss Clementine Ford, you're essential. You are essential workers. The latest ABS payroll. Anyway, yeah, you get the point. This dumb shit uh, feminist is that easily debunked. All right. You are the ones taking the casual jobs. You are the ones taking the hours that allow you the easy life. You can afford to let your husband or your partner work the long hours while you get to knock off early and go and pick the kids up from school because you've chosen to work that way. And yes, this is why Clementine Ford, there is no wage gap. It is purely choice. Um, so yes, uh, anyway, let's look into Clementine Ford a bit more, shall we? Because that breaking down her tweet was so fucking simple. She, dumb shit. Um, government to fund Clementine Ford for man bashing book. Oh, yes. Isn't it nice to know that this piece of crap has uh, a, a window open to achieve government funding? Um, she writes really trashy books about men. No, there's none in the picture, but yeah. She's, she's an absolute piece of crap. And we'll get to that, but don't worry. There, there's more coming. Um, yeah, she uh, the petition. Ford has announced, oh, by the way, this is from Anti-Feminism Australia. Uh, I did find this in other sources, but Anti-Feminism Australia doesn't require me to pay for a membership of some description or anything. So uh, they're well written. It'll do. You can you can sit back and cry now that I'm using right wing or anti feminist uh, websites, but I will use the best website I can find, regardless of whether it's left, right, or otherwise. So fucking sit back and have your little whinge, but I'm going to get on with this. Clementine Ford has announced she received a government grant to write her third man bashing book. Yes, you read correctly. Your taxpayer dollars are now being used by the Melbourne City. Uh, government council that'll be uh to fund clementine ford so she can write man bashing books imagine the outrage if the fu if they funded a man to write a book degrading women exactly but that's what clem does uh absolutely thrilled to be the recipient of, Mel of city of melbourne arts grant to support the writing of my book yeah see this this is why it's feminism Feminists are a minority. A minority of crazy bitches. And a few dullards on the side who still think that, you know, this is the only way to equality. But at the heart of it, it's just dumb bitches with way too many fucking connections. And, um, and, and they run arts. See, I've actually worked in arts. I've been on arts committees and I've been involved with arts. I, I own an arts business, um, an arts-based business, but I, I fund myself by commercial means because I can't get grants. Even the one time I was invited by a grants group to apply for a grant for something that I had mentioned to one of the people on the board, one of the women on the board, because it was all women, and I was invited to put in an application because they thought it was great. I got turned down. That same committee decided to fund one of my works, but they wanted me removed as the artist from the work because it was, it was a project working with kids. And they wanted me removed from it. Upon which I threatened them with... Uh, you know, suing them over stealing my work, and they soon shut up and fucked off. But, and the work never got done. But, yeah, I don't have friends in high places who just give me four grand to sit around home and pick my ass. Now, this, all of this has been sitting on my desk for a week now, and I watch a uh, local comedian uh, do a, a thing where he mentions this woman. Because apparently she's upset that some people thought she might have been a pedophile after one of his videos. 
Well, I have no doubt she's fucking over one boy, her son. She's fucking him over with this feminist shit that she's got in her head. But I doubt she's a pedophile, right? I, I don't know. I'm not going to go there. I don't think she is. There's no evidence to show that. In fact, I think she hates boys enough. She's more likely to um, destroy his life through feminism, right? Um, but she's uh, a single mum now, so she's tweeting shit like, um, leave your husband, leave your shitty husband, because, you know, what she needs in the world is more women to be like her, single fucking mothers. Um, but apparently she's going through hard times at the moment. This comedian uh, informed us that we should go light on Clem at the moment and not give her too much shit because, uh, you know, we just shouldn't give people shit. Well, fuck Clementine Ford. Fuck her seriously because... And, and there will be a story about why fuck her coming up. But she has a hand in the fucking tilt. And... Any hard time she's going through, she bought on herself. Because she's a horrid piece of shit. I have absolutely no fucking sorrow for this bitch. So yes. Um, while she is the horrid piece of shit that she is, she's managed to score herself four grand to sit around and pick her ass. Um, and I'm going to move on. Because... There's a lot more to get through, and I wanted to make this a short one just about this idiot. Spectator Australia, I know, right wing rag. Don't give a fuck. Look, I'm not right wing, but if these are, these sources are good, I will use them. Um, Clementine score, uh, charming Clementine scores a government grant. I think Karina might be one of those women that, um, See, this is, this is why I don't use these sources so much. I've got to pay for it. All right. We've been over the grant anyway. So here is this uh, very forward and, you know, feminist mind. And femi Clementine Ford prefer, uh, prepares to launch Beauty Line. Uh, yes. Because if anyone fucking had ever needed spack filler, this woman needed spack filler. She knows how to use fucking beauty products. Actually, I don't think she does. I think she needs a lot more fucking spack filling herself. Um, just taking a look at these photos of her. And you think, lady, the plasterer hasn't done enough work. <laughs> fucking hell. There's still gaps in that wall. Uh, lockdown has money, didn't money, done many funny things to people. We're seeing hidden talents emerge as a byproduct of not being allowed to leave the house. We're also seeing some opportunistic brand po uh, pivoting, which can only assume is paving the way for a glittering bridge of opportunities out on the other side of the crisis. Let's take extreme far-left uh, exhibitionist feminist Clementine Ford, for instance. Yeah, we're used to seeing her peddling her foul brand of man-hating misandry on whatever platform is so desperate for clicks they'll publish her unhelpful bile that's a at least that's a fucking spot on that that that's I, I couldn't have said it better about this woman uh but who would have thought that our clem had her sights on a beauty line in between continuing to churn out her derisive rhetoric blabbing on about men's violence against women She's taken to beauty blogging. <laughs> what? The? I mean, she's no natural beauty. So I'm guessing it has to be about how she fucking packs it on. <laughs> ah, the, the woes of the feminists, eh? All right, so uh, I'm actually going to... Oh, jeez, I've lost the story that I was going to go to. Uh, there was a story up here, I think... I'm pretty sure it was in the um, men's, the, the anti-feminism one, there it was. That was the one I went to. And Isaac Butterfield was the comedian, by the way. If you want to look up Isaac, he's all right. Not always on the ball, but he's all right. Uh, he's got the Aussie humour thing going. He's, it comes off nice. Uh, Clementine Ford doxes 14-year-old boy. 
Now, if you want to know the sort of woman that this is and the horrendous piece of shit this is, oh, and look, there's the need for spack filler back. Um, this is not her first outing at doxing people and going after people. Now, admittedly, this four-year-old boy, a 14-year-old boy, apparently said, uh, just shut the fuck up, Clementine. Holy shit, you need to calm the fuck down. Have rights... Uh, fuck down, women have rights, there's no need to fucking put out that there's n all the fucking time making a song about your fucking period, how about fucking times when Isaac Butterfield, yeah, too many fucking times, uh, yeah, anyway, uh, and also put a gun in your mouth, yeah, so yeah, he, he probably went a little over the top, uh, 14 year old kid out on the internet, I warned my son about putting shit on the internet you might re not recover from, but anyway, yeah, uh, she went after him and doxed him. And she did this a few years back with a guy with a mental disorder who used to catch at Melbourne trams and shake people's hands. And some woman, women decided that this was sexual harassment. Now, I've met many a person with many a mental illness and some have habitual things that they do and shaking hands seems a very mild thing to do i mean it's not like tourette's where suddenly you burst out swearing at people no he was shaking people's hands but that was taken as harassment by some women on melbourne trams and clem ford went to the effort of doxing the guy and going after him and getting her media audience to go after him so she's a really fucking horrid piece of shit. I wasn't lying when I said she was a horrid piece of shit. Uh, she's gone after people's jobs and all the rest of that. For no fucking... For, because she's heard something on the rumour mill. Nothing more than that. Anyway. Uh, we'll go back to the article that got me here in the first place with Clem Ford. Because she got herself published with Dan Daly... Uh, Clement For Time Ford says there's seven times the men types of men you meet dating online. And I will remind you what it is that thinks it is getting dates online. This thing apparently thinks it is getting dates online. I would like to point out that I think this is a fiction. And I think as we go through this, we will find it is. Somewhere towards the middle of last year, I found myself re-entering the lawless, swampish hellscape of online dating. Boo! <laughs> Clem lost her fella! Fucking about time. Poor bastard must have been suffering. Um, my last viewing of this hackneyed comedy of errors had taken place almost a decade earlier. See? Poor bastard put up with her for what, almost ten years. And a kid with her. God... Just thinking of putting... Oh, no. Oh, fucking hell. I'm never getting that picture out of my head again. Um, but I found that nothing much changed in the reboot. Same players, same tired stories, worse jokes, probably. Exact same level of adoration for the official UK. Still too many electric skateboards. Excuse you. I like my electric skateboard and I happen to be quite married, thank you. Um, what's fucking wrong with them? Uh, but when you're getting around a city like Melbourne, seriously, what's wrong with an electric skateboard? Uh, to be clear, I wasn't looking for a relationship, just a temporary reprieve from the existential crisis of living in a world doomed to perish under the weight of a cast catastrophic climate change. Uh, plus, maybe feel up, I feel up under my, sh Ugh, I feel up, un oh, fucking hell. You know that you, oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, I hope she uses spec filler up there too. Um, oh, um, yeah, that's just horrible. Uh, but my short foray into the sludge of orchestrated meat suits uh, has reminded me of what I already knew. Yeah, uh, you didn't know much. Um, that, that's obvious from the way you perceive humanity, both, both men and women. Um, but anyway, uh, that much of being seven days of a week, 
seven plot loss and seven stages of grief. There are also the seven types of basic heterosexual cisgender men. Well, if that's what you want, don't fucking moan about them. Uh, here they are in no particular order. And this is where the fiction starts. I mean, the fiction that she was getting dates online anyway. But um, this, the Joker, this guy can be anywhere between 19 year olds, 19 and 53. But age is just a number, baby. What's wrong with being a Joker? He loves to laugh, and people who don't take themselves at uh, people who and people who don't take themselves to she wrote this. He laughs. He loves a laugh, and people who don't take themselves too seriously. I, I don't have a problem with that. Uh, good banter is a must. You know, people who take themselves too seriously, they've got fucking real problems. I tell you. Uh, don't worry if you're not sophisticated enough to get his jokes, because he'll definitely crack up in the middle of telling them, so you know what's supposed to be funny and what isn't. See, what's this? One one in a million guys who laughs at his own joke before he's even finished it? I, I don't think she's been dating anyone. He refers to his friends as the lads, and? And are the only and are the ones pictured in exactly the same pose, ten arms thrust around each other, one hand clutching a beer, in 90% of his photographs. You seem to hang out with a very limited number of guys, uh, because I don't know many guys who walk around with a fucking picture of their mates' arms around each other with a beer in their hand. Seriously? Where did you meet this guy? Until the moment you turned up at the pub and at the pub you suggested you still weren't properly clear on which one was him. He found his mattress on the side of the road and he will never make you come. The fuck? I would bet that he probably didn't find his mattress on the side of the road. He probably bought a bloody good one because he's probably got a stable job working somewhere hard and he doesn't mind a beer after working hard and he's got some mates he goes and has beer with. All good. He bought a fucking top-notch mattress because he could. Didn't have you in his life to rip him off. And he will never make you come because he has fucking no real interest in you and you've pointed up out that you have no real interest in him you just want a bit of touchy feely guess what helps when you enter a relationship with someone in which you are going to come somebody who gives a fuck if you do or not because i tell you what we guys we can just do the job and get out of there and we don't have to think about you so you've got to make yourself somebody we give enough of a shit about. Uh, so, yeah, the picture she chooses is the, um, I don't know, footy guys at the pub. Uh, from a movie, mind you. So, you know, not real guys, but caricatures of guys. Her ex her sample. Hi, I'm a guy, I'm Guy on Hinge. What? I love Seinfeld and The Office UK. What? Nobody likes that shit. And I know the best spot in town for tacos. Well, nothing wrong with tacos. I, I make a damn good burrito myself. Um, love banter and people who take themselves too seriously. Here's a photo of me drinking beer. And, yeah, right. This is your mate's shoe. This is not a glass. Because this is a specific kind of glass, you dumb idiot. Yeah, you fucking dumb bint. Um, I love the word bint. Jeez, I'm loving that. Uh, since I found that Scottish bloke, what's his name? Oh, God, he uses it a lot, and it's fucking got me back into using it. <laughs> it's an excellent word, bint. Uh, the gym guy. Listen, before a ton of guys email me and scream that I could uh, probably do with a workout, or s some more... Fuck, by the way. Uh, yeah, get fucked. Obvious, you're, you're, look, you're an... Uh, you're a pothole, a potmarked face, ugly bitch. Seriously. 
Nobody gives a fuck if you work out or not because they're not fucking you for anything more than a quickie. The, uh, the guy who put up with you, I, I remember seeing photos of him a few years back, which means I know the sort of guy who might be suffering the sort of desperation that would require someone to fuck you over any period of time, let alone an extended one. Do you understand what I'm saying? You don't have to exercise because nobody's fucking you because they want to be fuck, be getting anything more than their dick wet. Obviously, I think it's fine to go to the gym and do exercise in, well, whatever. I like gym stuff. I like hiking. I can do 10 toe push-ups right down the parallel. Yeah, every, yeah, fucking bullshit. <laughs> uh, Oh, fuck. She just... Because every photo of you is of you standing in front... You know, I've... I've met guys who like some of these things. Not many guys who like all of them. The guy you think you're seeing standing in front of a mirror flexing is a very specific gym guy. Again, did you meet one guy who went to a gym? Because you don't seem to have met a scope of these people to have built a, an image that I can accept is a, a real image of people who go to gyms. I know people who go to gyms. This is not people who go to gyms. This is a very specific minority group. And trust me, they're not looking to date you. They're looking to date the girl on the exercise bike who looks fit and hot. And you don't got none of that. In fact, it'd be great if they could both pose in front of the mirror together. <laughs> I've met this guy. I've met this guy a few times. And he doesn't want you. What's up, beautiful? I'm looking for a woman to take care of herself and likes to take care of her man too. You should not contact me if you're not into fitness. I'm into. I'm not into sleepings. I'd rather get up and go for a run than relax with in a with a black with a short black. I swear, she's never met a man in her life. She's lucky that one guy fucked her for almost ten years, because in the dating market she'd have gone. She'd, she'd have been fucking soy boys for the last 10 years without that. I mean, she was essentially fucking a soy boy anyway, but she would have been fucking at the bottom of the barrel. Uh, like all those feminists at universities who bitch and moan that, um, you know, people advertise weight loss and shit. and They look better than me and they're getting all the nice guys that I want. But, you know, I'm getting laid a lot. It's just by these fucking losers. That shit. That'd be Clementine Ford. At first glance, this guy... At the moment, she's just feeling herself up by the sounds of it because she's got no fucking hell, other hope. Uh, the Aussie bloke. I don't mind the Aussie bloke. Uh, at first glance, this guy could seem to be the larrikin. Yeah, it is the face of the Aussie bloke, but it's not the true character of the Aussie bloke. And it's true that they do have a lot of overlaps, mainly in their Netflix watch queue. What? Net? What? I go. Oh. This woman's an idiot. But there are some subtle differences. I, I think when you write something like this, you're writing for a female audience. You're not writing about men. You are writing trying to bait women to believe that uh, what the way they see life through their Netflix watch queue uh, is, is how everyone else sees it. And you must have your hand on the fucking throttle and be going for it. You must know everything. But you're not writing about reality. But there are some subtle differences. For example, a larrikin is more likely to sport a giant pair of novelty sunglasses in at least one of his pictures. What the fuck are you got with pictures? 
possibly three. So he likes to have a bit of fun, does he? And he likes to uh, promote himself as a fun-loving guy, does he? While the Aussie bloke favours a pair of uh, classic meth-dealing shades slugged around the back of his neck or cradling on the brim of his baseball cap. Baseball cap? All right. Don't know what Aussie blokes you know. The Aussie bloke loves AFL and considers this one of the most important and interesting things to know about him. You know what? This love of sport does not carry for all Aussie blokes. And Aussie rules doesn't carry for all Aussie blokes. The pair of sunglasses thing doesn't go for all Aussie blokes. The larrikin, which is a fun-loving, mischievous guy that, for any international viewers, is not the whole truth of an Aussie guy. The, the larrikin is the face of an Aussie guy. But behind the Aussie guy is a respect for country, family, um, 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 um oh, bloody words. When they come to me in the middle of recording, I'm not fucking re-recording this because of this. Um, yeah, it, it's um, responsibility is the word I'm looking for. The Aussie larrikin is somebody who takes responsibility in their job and in their life. But taking all that responsibility also takes its toll. And the way that you expel the toll that is taken is by having a bit of fun, showing a lighter side, being the larrikin. You see, you don't know much about the Aussie bloke at all. You think it's all just sport and fun. But the sport and fun is the result of taking life far more seriously and, and taking far more responsibility This is why I think she's never met any real men. She's never met any men that she's spent time with or got to know or understand. And she writes this article about men as if she knows them. A sample. Hey, gorgeous. I'm your average guy who loves his footy. Go Bombers. And his beer. I'm looking for a lady to spoil and to snuggle on the couch with. Let's debate if pineapple belongs on pizza. What the Fucking hell, that was a shallow description of even the, the larrikin bloke. Uh, that's just... Fucking hell. <sighs> I'm beginning to think that an, any evening sitting on the couch with you would be absolutely fucking boring. And what would we watch? Love Island or some shit. And there'd be no fucking witty banter or cracks of jokes or anything at, at the expense of what you're watching on the television. Because you'd be too busy trying to work out how men were fucking the world up through this thing you were watching. I'm just thinking that no guy deserves you. No guy should sink that low. It's fucking, it's distressing. The drainer. You'll know the drainer the instant you stumble across him. His profile is just a list of all the things he doesn't like in women. Really? Um, I don't know about online dating. I don't do it. Um, I've never dated for that matter. Um, but go, go ahead. From the amount of time we've spent in the bathroom to whether or not we have tattoos or dated lots of men. He's, well, all I can say is you don't know this guy at all because this guy wants nothing to do with you. You've just strung out all the things he doesn't like about you. <laughs> You've never met this guy to talk to him and learn who he is. You don't know why his uh, profile is a list of what he doesn't like about women. Maybe he's dated enough women to have learned what he doesn't like. He hasn't worked out yet what he does like, which is why he's still dating. Then your boring... Fucking ugly old ass comes along and fucking he's running for the hills, I tell you. Uh, but he's made it clear he doesn't want to have anything to do with you. He's very clear about what he will and will not tolerate. Well, yes, it's something that we all 
do as we get older. I've said it many a time, it, it becomes harder in life to establish lasting relationships because we become less flexible. We become less tolerant of others. We settle into our own ways. So, yeah, it, it is the difficulties of forming relationships late in life. And it is why you idiot feminist women who are now single mums have to go online dating and moan about men. Because what you don't know, if you settled into being a bitch, he settled into being a bastard. <laughs> Fucking hell. <sighs> but offers nothing of his own appearance or personal beyond a half-lit photograph of him sporting a neatly trimmed goatee. By the way, I am wearing a lovely set of mutton chops in the style of a um, English gent today. I'm <laughs> I fuck with my beard in ways that fuck with my wife. <laughs> I've been growing it out for weeks. She hates it. Um, so I've been growing it out for weeks, and I decided that I was going to do this with it. So yes, I currently am sporting a lovely set of mutton chops that goes over into a handlebar moustache. Um, Fuck you, Clem Ford. <laughs> Don't worry, because even if your own profile profile explicitly violates every single one of his righteous deal breakers, he will still definitely message you. Clem, the only reason this guy's messaging you is because he knows who you are. And he's going to get up you somehow. <laughs> Seriously. The guys who write this sort of shit... Uh, about the list of women that they do or don't like, they've probably all heard of you, right? There's probably some guys out there in the mainstream who've never fucking heard of you. But the guys in my circles, they'd, they quite a few of them would probably almost fit your description of them, what they don't like about women. And they know about you. Let's get this straight. You should not contact me if you have tattoos, smoke, drink, alcohol, have slept with more than five men, swear, are taller than five, seven, live in share house, aren't interested in children, already have kids, don't go to the gym, take selfies, are feminists, or have short hair, no time wasters, please. Well, that sounds like a fair enough thing to do. I wonder if a woman had written this, if you would um, see this as a bad thing. All right. So, the woman writes, let's get this straight. You should not contact me if uh, you don't have prison tats, uh, you smoke, you drink alcohol, um, you slept with more than five women, more than five women, um, you're not six foot three, and um, you're living in a share house. Do you think that's acceptable? I mean... Uh, and um, you know we'll, we'll move the um we'll, we'll move this one huh don't live in a share house how about don't earn under sixty thousand a year all right so, so that puts it in the the um category a woman is more likely to ask it do you not have any problem you don't have any problem with that do you Clem the conversationalist his profile has barely any information on it except for his height age and job which are apparently all lies. Not really into answering these questions. If you don't, if you want to know anything, just ask. Actually, that's pretty much me. Uh, I, I fit into most of these categories in some way or another, but I don't give my information online. Seriously, I, I have for years traded on the idea that everybody I don't know is interesting to me because I don't know you. I don't know anything of you. I don't know anything of your life. You could tell me anything about you and I would find it interesting. And I will try to find it interesting until you bore me shitless with it. But I will try to learn about you by letting you talk about you. And hopefully in return, you'll let me say some things about me and we can learn things about one another. So I don't want to write down all this shit. I want to learn from you who you perceive you to be. And I used to chat with people online an awful lot. Because uh, I worked at, at my computer 
in my home office. And so my human contact with the world was through internet relay chat services. And that's what I used to tell people. Tell me something about you, anything. I will find it interesting. So yes, Clem, I think you're just being lazy. Why not talk to the guy? Uh, he's the thinker. He's left-leaning, into cooking, nature walks, prefers Netflix over nice nightclubs. Again with the Netflix. Rather uh, read a good book than pollute his brain with reality television. I haven't done nightclubs in years. I do like a good book, but I don't find the time to read because I'm reading this sort of shit all the time from you and other idiots. Um... And no, no time at all for fucking reality television, but now I get the idea what you like. Uh, he loves a good debate and is fond of playing devil's advocate to see what makes people tick. Oh yeah, I do. I love playing devil's advocate. <laughs> Fuck with the greenies all the time. And, and as a um, former environmentalist writer and activist... Uh, I know all the right buttons to press, to push. And when you say stupid shit, I am going to play devil's advocate at you and piss you right the fuck off. <laughs> Don't say stupid shit. We won't have a problem. Uh, and not just the greenies, the feminists and everyone. I'll fucking, I'll, I'll take you all on. Uh, he'll share with you a very long list of literary writers whose books he claims to enjoy and you'll notice none of them are women. Actually, I, I, I like a long list of writers, and there are heaps of women amongst them. I, I don't discriminate against female writers. I, I'm currently reading my son the Magic Faraway Tree. Now, I have a big collection of Enid Blyton books because I fucking enjoyed them as a kid, and so I collected them. And <laughs> didn't make doesn't make them any more or less than anyone else because a woman wrote them, and I doubt that you know this guy has a book collection or what's in it, and I would bet that when he names some of his books, he names the top ones a choice a choice selection. The only. Uh, the only thing he cares about more than Camus and Joyce is music. Love music. What about it? And he guarantees you he knows more about that than you do. Well, I do have a classic education in music to a certain degree, and I did play with an awful lot of bands and, and stuff. So, Clem, you don't strike me as having any sort of education in much of anything except writing and you do that pretty shittily. Uh, he's overly competitive about everything. Now, sometime into your first date, he'll let you know he's into non-monogamy, and he th he thinks this fact will blow your mind. Um, oh God, you know, you're you're a real piece of work, Clem Form Ford. For somebody who has uh, claimed to be the advocate of progressiveness, what the fuck have you got against people who are not into non-monogamy? Eh? <laughs> Look, I'm polyamorous. I'm in a relationship that's a polyfidelity. So, you know, it's a committed relationship. There's no dating or any of that crap going on in our relationship. My second partner is not polyamorous and she said that there could be no more women and I do not believe that polyamory excludes the idea of fidelity. Um, so, no more women. Fine. She's worth it. So, you know, you, you draw your lines where you want to draw your lines. But what the fuck are you such a bigot for, Clem? Hey, jeez. I don't know if the thinker is automatically going to be uh, this guy who says he's into non-monogamy. And I've got a feeling 
that he are, even though you do quite a good job of almost describing my, my, me, my library, my life um, in some ways, um, I think you're talking about the soy boys who are trying to put on an act for you. This isn't, these aren't real people like this. What you're talking about is a soy boy who wants to make himself look like he's an intellectual. He's probably never read half the books on his shelf. And if he has, he didn't fucking understand them. Um, I have to admit, I have an extensive library. I haven't even read half the buggers. <laughs> but um, there's no hope that I've understood half of those books because I haven't even touched them. Um, yes, I married a librarian with my fa first partner. What can I tell you? We already had extensive book collections. Uh, a sample, smart, compassionate man, uh, available for dates, dinner, intellectual conversations. Let's go see some live music and talk about the state of the world over tapas and wine. Who in the fuck wants to talk about the state of the world in a date? Shit, I'd do that. I'd do that. Uh, but dating? Really? You've just met someone and what you want to go do is talk about the state of the world. This is why I think you're talking about soy boys, left-wing left activists, because who the fuck wants to get that worked up about the state of the world? Because they want to discuss it during their dating. Unless, of course, they're expecting you to be that sort of person. Taller than you in heels, because apparently that matters. Uh, not my kid in the picture <laughs> whatever your perfect match just kidding he doesn't exist well guess what clem ford you are nobody's perfect match either welcome to being what are you in your 30s now heading on for 40 maybe in your early 40s who gives a fuck anyway but you're a single mum looking for someone to fill you up <laughs> Yeah, you're a nice piece of work, Clem Ford. Um, anyway, I'm going to leave Clementine Ford there. You get an idea what a piece of shit she is. Um, and I, I really want to read that last article. I hadn't actually finished reading it through. I'd only read about half of it, and I thought, she's invented all these men. She's never met them. She's never met more than one man, which was even half of any one of these descriptions. And that is what she's built this entire article, Seven Types of Men You'll Meet Dating Online. And of course, number seven, there's no perfect man. Well, of course there fucking isn't. There's no perfect woman. And anyone who thinks they're going to find the perfect person is going to be set in, in being single for the rest of their lives. Everything, every relationship you will ever have during your life takes work friendships marriages whatever in the hell it is takes work because we're all different we all think differently we act differently we have different ideas different hobbies different practices and the older we get the more set in our ways we become there is no perfection so clem instead of fucking moaning about people and inventing things to moan about you try and get your shit together. Be a little more flexible. Take take an interest in these people so you actually learn more about them. Maybe you'll learn what the Aussie bloke is. That he's an, actually a very responsible guy who will see you well. He will always take care of you and look after you. He will always try to do his best to provide for you and to make sure that you're safe. Now, whether or not you want that, is up to you but it is something of the larrikin that i i myself have that other people who i know who have that mindset have is an underlying responsibility to people around us our society our families but you don't give a fuck it you don't go and find out you just moan all right that's it, everyone. I've been the anti-theocrat. Uh, you can see I've been dicking with my setup a little bit again. So, you know, something to do. Keeps me busy while I can't record, but I have to home, home school. And, um, yeah. 
it'll be pick up time soon and that will be the end of my day again <laughs> all right till the next one may your gods remain fictional uh, see you then